in the search for life, you know, what we're doing is we're trying to find the water. And we know there's water on earth and there's life everywhere on earth where there's water, there's life, even the Dead Sea. The fact that it's called the Dead Sea is an example of what you say when you don't have a microscope. So we know that water is here. It's a thing. So it's part of matter. But when we make conclusions about matter as a whole, are we doing justice to water? The stuff that makes up everything is called matter. Doesn't make any difference if it's a tiny grain of sand or all of the air that surrounds the Earth. Everything is made of matter. Properties are observable, measurable characteristics that we can use to tell them apart. And we got to know some of the most common and useful properties that we can put a value or number on, like length, width, height, volume, and weight. When I look at the categories we use for matter, it's evident that most of the ways we measure matter does not apply for water. Whether we talk about shape, form, taste, vision, which includes color, um, smell, none of those register with water. Liquid is matter that has a definite size, but no definite shape. The water in this glass is a liquid. It has a definite size, but no definite shape. Like, you could say that my desk is desk-shaped, but there's no such thing as water-shaped. You are inside of a medium. When you're inside of a medium, you can't claim that this medium has no form, because you can take some of it and put it in this jar or in this room. That medium's form is measured in the scale of space, in the scale of the object it surrounds and where that is. So when you see videos of water in space, you see a piece of object that has a random form, but water will form around it as a sphere, it will wrap it. It has the desire to completely wrap and be fully connected around that object. Yes, some materials aren't so easily lumped into just one state of matter. These unusual materials can actually act like multiple states of matter. Neat, right? Want to meet just such a material? Then let me introduce you to non-Newtonian fluids. So while we categorize water with sand and the rest of the elements, the rest of matter and stuff, we find so many new states of water. Beyond the three states we already described, we find new characters of water that are non-Newtonian, that defy our laws of physics and science. And we just give each one of those moments a name. It just, it's, it's one off. It's a little miracle within science that we can't explain. So water is still kind of mysterious, and there's probably a lot more to learn about it. I mean, only recently have scientists learned how it's even able to conduct electricity, or the fact that forcing it through tiny nanotubes changes its boiling and freezing points. Even though it's all around us and inside of us, that's no reason to take water for granted. My main question is why water is not a non-Newtonian liquid. There are two different types of fluids. Newtonian and non-Newtonian. Newtonian fluids are what you may be most familiar with. For example, water, milk, and oil are all Newtonian fluids. We have water. That's a basic composition that we have found on this planet. Let's assume that it's a composition. But then we add things to water. We get a lot of different results. So for Newtonian fluids, Changing the force you apply to the fluid, such as gently slapping it, or hitting it, will not change its viscosity. Non-Newtonian fluids, on the other hand, have viscosities that can change as the force applied to them changes. Like earlier, it behaves differently when you apply a lot of force, than when you apply a little bit of force. This fluid here, known as oobleck, is a suspension of cornstarch in water. We get a lot of different results yet we give each one of them a name and then we attach the results to that name so water plus cornstarch equals oobleck which is a fiction name from a dr seuss book and then we call oobleck a non-newtonian fluid nobody mentions that water is also non-newtonian in other mixtures in other places, that it behaves in a non-Newtonian way also when it comes to 
gravity, when it comes to other laws of nature that most elements obey to 100%. The issue is why can you put tremendous stress on these systems without sinking in? These are very, very simple systems, just solids and liquids, fine particles. They behave unlike anything uh, you might expect from an ordinary solid or from ordinary liquid. You see it feels really liquid-like, but then if I pull on it, something new happens, right? Another simple way to understand this, take all the different materials we add to water to make it non-Newtonian, be it ketchup, paint, or oobleck. Put aside water. Take all the materials you combined with water to get those unique properties. You will find that all of those materials will never be non-Newtonian again other than in mixture with water. So, we have a long list of elements and one water. None of them will ever be non-Newtonian again. Water, always, with many different elements. So who is non-Newtonian here? You would think, uh, if I hit it really hard, I'm going to break it. This is a fluid normally, and if I hit it hard, it turns it into a solid. <laughs> In the human form, we take water and air as something that is just obvious, it is there always have been. Uh, we talk about air as something that is independent, it's just there, even though it doesn't exist anywhere else. So all of our life support systems are either water or byproducts of water. The air, the atmosphere is a byproduct of water. When we look at water around the globe, the atmosphere is a thinner layer of that same thing. So some of the air is actually just debris and pollution of water's activities. Just like we want to invent machines that would feed off of our pollution, water has done so. We are vehicles that feed off of the pollution of oxygen on this planet. Did you know that the orange tank of the space shuttle has two tanks within it, one twice as large as the other? The big one contains hydrogen, the little one contains oxygen. You bring them together, the exhaust of that tank is H2O, otherwise known as water. And that is the very simple chemical formula for what's going on at the bottom, at the business end of the space shuttle. What's ultra pure water? So ultra pure water is water devoid of any impurities. So it has all the impurities stripped away from it. When it comes out, is it nothing but hydrogen and oxygen? Right. It's totally pure? Completely pure. The name H2O is just like the name human. It's a, it's a very general name to something that is never the same. So just like people, no two H2O, no two water mo molecules are the same. Water attaches itself to different materials and it has different preferences also into the materials it attaches itself to. In some way, you will find behavior, character in that. So the problem is with ultra pure water, ultra pure water is very aggressive and is very unstable. So if I would take oh. this ultra pure water and send it through copper piping, it's actually going to try to take the copper off the piping. It does not like to be pure. That is the most simple way that I can explain to you that H2O is something you never come in contact with as pure H2O. Relying on ultra pure water as drinking water is going to leach your body of all its precious minerals and that's going to make you really sick and then you're going to die. We, conscious beings, can create H2O. But in nature, the way water was found and presented to us has always been water, not pure H2O. You cannot find pure H2O in nature. So what do you guys use this for? Good old-fashioned scientific experiments. <laughs> that was so awesome! The way we use language is not helping us because we categorize matter as hydrophilic and hydrophobic. It's not the matter that decides, I like water, I don't like water. It is water that either attracts or repels something. 
it is the water that is loving or hating. We keep looking at different mixtures of water with other elements and we give them new categories. While it's very clear that water is the one changing state, water is the one that is the most flexible and transformative depending on what you mix in it, depending on the tools you give water. Okay, next most abundant ingredient, life on Earth, oxygen. Next, carbon, in order. Next, nitrogen, and together class, other. We are one for one the same ingredients that appear in the universe. If we were made of like an isotope of bismuth, you might say, hey, we're kind of, we're different. We got something different going on now. Hey, excuse me. We are the same as the universe. And these elements are forged in the centers of stars. We oversimplify in a way that is not in line with reality because we claim hydrogen, oxygen, that's it. We don't need to say water. So if in every instance that nature suddenly behaved differently than we expected to, water was present there in every instance. Yet we don't isolate water as the element that allowed that to happen. We see it as the mixture of things. Most of those mixtures were artificially made by consciousness. Most of the liquids we describe here are either man-made or water-made. Be it a tomato, ketchup, oobleck, cornstarch, all of those things. Paint, however you look at it, we're talking about byproducts of water, which existed from day one. We did not make water. The water we found on this planet was here, as is and on other planet, exactly the same. Mars, Europa, one of the moons of Jupiter, uh, exoplanets, so our search for life is driven by the search for water. Europa is one of the moons of Jupiter where we're pretty sure there's an ocean, a liquid ocean of water beneath a frozen surface. So on day one on this planet, there were two things, water and rock. The rock is made out of many, many different elements. We have a table of all those elements. Those elements are passive. Those elements never created life anywhere else without water. If water was not the one making life happen, evolution would have created life that is not dependent on water. We would have found that one bacteria, that one creature, something in a place where there's no water. Life would have found a way to be without water. You'd think by now scientists would have learned everything there is to know about one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms, H2O. But we learn new things about water all the time. Really, we do. It's been my personal experience working on this video of finding myself getting deeper and deeper into confusion about what science knows about water, about all those different places that water shows us non-Newtonian behaviors, shows us all those little miracles within science that we put aside quietly and instead of drawing the one common line between all of them, which is water. To me, that's the more scientific approach. And I think that we just need to re-examine our categories and look within them on the different behaviors and who is the common villain in all of them. Who's the one that's always showing up when things don't go the way we expect them to. What happened? Welcome to the real Waterland. Where everything is water, even us. I hate getting wet.